Welcome to Big Monday, presented by Boost Mobile. Tonight from Morgantown, West Virginia, it's the 14th ranked Mountaineers hosting the Texas Longhorns. From inside a packed house at WVU Coliseum, alongside former Big 12 veteran King McClure, I'm Rich Hollenberg. King, Press Virginia is dead, and this is the year of the upset. 64 unranked teams have toppled ranked teams already this season. West Virginia, one of those teams this past Saturday, losing to Kansas State, but they still have one of the fiercest defenses in the country. Well, Rich, the team we saw on Saturday against Kansas State is not the typical West Virginia defense. They lock up. They hold teams to 25% from the three-point line, second in the country. That's just what they do. And for Texas to pull off an upset, they're going to need another big upset, for another big effort from Jericho Sims. Jericho Sims, 20 points, six rebounds last game against one of the premier bigs in the conference in Udoka Azebuke. Can he keep it up tonight? We will find out. Sims is averaging a double-double in big play, Big 12 play, and they say styles make the fight. It's a cliche, but it's true in this case. Shaka Smart's team loves to push the tempo, get the ball up and down the floor, and shoot a lot of threes. Shaka is obviously famous for his Havoc style of play. They don't quite do that at Texas anymore, but he still wants to push the pace. As for Bob Huggins, they have really slowed things down. They're not a big tempo team, but Bob Huggins has, as we mentioned, a fierce defense. Some may say it's the best defense in all the land. They also rebound the ball just as well as anybody in the country. Those are going to be keys tonight as West Virginia and their home whites going up against the Longhorns in their road rust orange uniforms. And Matt Coleman for the Horns controls the opening tip. Here's Sims, two feet in the paint, and it rolls off, and a rebound goes to Derek Culver, who's second in the conference in rebounding. Your West Virginia starting five, Emmett Matthews really struggling offensively. The key players to watch are the two bigs, number one in white, Derek Culver, and number 34, freshman sensation, Oscar Sheboy. Those two at the top of the Big 12, in the rebounding category. Sometimes West Virginia's best offense is rebounding their own misses. Here's Sheebway with his first touch. Shot fake goes right at Sims, off the mark. Here comes Texas. Courtney Rainey down the right side, and he got handled by McKay, but still got it to go. No whistle. It's 2-0. Texas on top. If Texas can get in transition tonight, that might be one of their best offenses. Inside, high post, Culver. Jermaine Haley gets the touch, working on Fedris. Nice touch along the left side by Jermaine Haley for the first bucket for the Mountaineers. Jermaine Haley has actually been playing, I wouldn't say good, but he's been solid. Nine for 13 in his last three games from the field. Make it 10 for 14 now with that bucket. West Virginia coming in at 14 and three. Overall, three and two in conference play. Texas, 12 and five overall and two and three in the Big 12. Kamaka Hepa with an air ball, but it goes off Shibwe's leg and out of bounds. It'll be a fresh 20 for the Longhorns. Both teams coming up losses. Texas lost at home to Kansas on Saturday. And West Virginia upset by K-State on the road. Here's McCabe. Off the mark, Matthews. And he got clobbered under the basket. Emmett Matthews will go to the line and shoot two. Texas ball on That'll be the first foul on Kamaka Hepa. Anytime you face a West Virginia team, King, you're going to have to use a lot of your fouls. So we'll accept, expect to see an extended bench tonight from Shaka Smart. And Matthews can't convert on the first free throw of the night, but free throws are something 
that West Virginia does in abundance. As a matter of fact, they come in with 264 free throws made compared to Texas, Tim King, only 205 free throws attempted by the Longhorns. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. That shows what a difference in the style of play we have. Difference in the style of play, most definitely. Coleman. Hepa, nice shot fake. Cross court, Febris, 10 on the shot clock. Tough step back and a good high hands defense closeout by Emmett Matthews. That's just pitch a perfect defense from West Virginia. The ability to force Febres into a, a long contested two. And a nice touch along the baseline by Derek Culver, the 6'10 sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio, is his first two. Off the window, in and out. And it's going to be off a Mountaineer. It'll stay Texas basketball. Your officials tonight, Joe DeRosa, Jerry Pollard, and Mike Roberts in a Veteran officiating crew. Here's Sims. Right hand, soft touch, short. And Shibwe has the rebound. To me, that's just not what Sims does. He's a great roller in the pick and roll. He's a great dump down player, really athletic, but I do not think he's a post up player. And I, I don't think that's the offense that you should go to right now. First three attempt by Matthews is good. And that's a terrific sign for Bob Huggins. He has really struggled offensively this season. Three for 17 in Big 12 play, but he's got four points already tonight. That's a great sign. I think he is the X factor to take this West Virginia team to the next level. If he's really good, this is a Elite Eight Final Four team. Nice look, and there's Sims doing what Sims can do, getting bouncy and throwing down the two-hand flush. You know, Fran Fischella often says that Oscar Sheboy is the most athletic player in the Big 12. I disagree. I think it's hands down Jericho Sims. Not saying that he's better than Oscar Sheboy, but I just think he's more athletic because I played against them both. And Jericho Sims is more of a threat when you go try to finish over him. Well, let's take a look at that athleticism from Jericho Sims that you talked about. That they cause havoc, and sometimes when you cause havoc, you have breakdowns, and that was a great location, and they found Jericho Sims to get the easy flush. Jericho Sims has been impressive in Big 12 play, averaging a double-double, 11.8 points and 11.2 rebounds. 10 on the shot clock for West Virginia. Here's Gabo Savoyan just checked in. And he's a defensive specialist, a little bit challenged on the offensive end, and it showed there. Hey, he had a great game last, last game. Might have been the only thing that went right for him. He played his butt off, honestly, on, on the offensive end. Inside, Culver faces up, spins away, air ball, loose ball, who wants it? Coleman's on the floor. And we have our first timeout with 15.34 to go in West Virginia up by four. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bo You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. It's a big Monday presented by Boost Mobile in Morgantown. An early lead for the 14th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers. 8-4 over Texas with 15 and a half to go. An up-to-date look at your Big 12 standings, and there is one team atop still undefeated. That would be King McClure's Baylor Bears. Hey, shout out to Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears, 5-0 in conference. They're playing great right now. The guards are exceptional, and Freddie Gillespie, probably you know the most underrated person on that team, does his job night in, night out. The Bears are playing great right now. Right behind them, the Kansas Jayhawks at four and one. Three on the shot clock for number three, and Gabo Saboyan off the mark. Loose ball corralled by Hepa. So there are four teams at three and two in the Big 12 right now. Which of those teams do you think is going to get some separation as the conference schedule moves along? 
Uh, well, I, I, I like this. You know, it's really hard for me to tell right now. I, I, I love Texas Tech. I, I, I love Chris Beard. You can never count him out because he's such a great coach and, and his defense is unlike anybody else's. Jordan McCabe with that last bucket. And that's another good sign for the Mountaineers offense because he's shooting just 25% coming into this game. Well, our big Monday night continues on ESPN over on the big network. It's a 9 Eastern, 8 Central matchup with Oklahoma taking on the aforementioned number one Baylor Bears in Waco. The Bears have beaten the Sooners in their last three meetings and five of their last six. But how about those Bears? 14 straight wins, and they're number one in the nation for the second time ever. The last time was when King McClure was still playing for him. Sophomore year, uh, Mountaineer fans will love this. Came number one on Monday. Tuesday came into this building and got beat by 30-plus points. What did they say? Uneasy is the head <laughs> that wears the crown. Man. And we've seen that this season. As we said, it's the year of the upset. Hey, that's just how it is in college basketball this year. Parody at its finest. Here's Matthews. Uh -oh. oh, and then Matthews might be feeling it. This is huge for him. Basketball is such a game of confidence. And if you see him and McCabe the last few games, the last game that Emmett Matthews played against Kansas State, he just didn't look himself. He did not look confident. And him hitting these shots is huge for him and his confidence because, like I said earlier, he can take this team to another level. Matt Coleman silences the Mountaineer crowd. His first points of the game, and he is now six for his last 13 from three-point line. Nice look inside. McCabe, shot fakes by Shibwe, will send him to the free-throw line. Well, Oscar Shibwe, we talked a lot about Jericho Sims, how he's averaging a double-double in Big 12 play. Same thing for big number 34 in white. You can just tell his hands are getting so much better game by game. He's still a little raw offensively, but his, his rebounding ability <laughs> is something that we really haven't seen recently. Him Between him and Culver is, is really unbelievable to have two great offensive rebounders on one team. It's just crazy to be honest with you. Well, Oscar Shibwe was a much heralded freshman, just the second McDonald's All-American to enroll with Bob Huggins at West Virginia. And there was a great stat by West Virginia's radio announcer, longtime announcer Tony Caridi. He has four 17-plus rebound games already this season. Mountaineer great Kevin Jones, who helped lead this team to a Final Four in 2010, had two such games in all 139 career games he played as a Mountaineer. And he really hasn't been playing basketball that long. Like we watched today in shoot around, the coach was teaching him how to how to win a, t a, a tip on the on the jump. He, he's there so much he can learn, and his his ceiling is so high. Hepa left alone. He can knock that down, and he does. Kamaka Hepa has his first three of the night. That is why Kamaka Hepa entered the starting lineup the last six games. In conference, he is shooting 47% from the three-point line. He is a good floor spacer for this team. Well, we talked about Shibwe and those rebounds. He's joined by Derek Culver at the top of the Big 12 rebounding list. Right behind them, Yudoka Azabuki, Freddie Gillespie, and Christian Doolittle. But those two teammates at the top are a rarity. You have to go all the way back to 2005, 2006 for the last pair of teammates to lead the Big 12 in rebounding. It was Texas's LaMarcus Aldridge and P.J. Tucker, both uh, playing very well in the NBA these days. There's Gabo Saborian's first bucket of the night. So far, West Virginia looks pretty good offensively, King. Yeah, they, they do. That, we saw it in the, the game last week against TCU. They, they were hitting. Their offense is getting better. It's just, you know, the last game against Kansas State, the defense wasn't there, but their offense is getting better. Hot shooting now from the Texas Longhorns from distance. They make just under nine threes a game. There's another one by Jace Febris, who's now six for his last 12 from three. Oh, so buoyant with back-to-back -back buckets. Now, I know Osaboyan is not a, a, a big offensive threat, but 
you have to at least guard him. That's so disrespectful to not even be guarding this man. He he just had 10 points last game. He can put the ball in the hole a little bit. Well, now a couple of substitutions for Shaka Smart. Jericho Sims back on the floor, as is number 22 in orange, and that is Kai Jones. He's another big man, but he is very much a prospect in the mold of Oscar Shibwe is high, high upside for Kai Jones, the freshman out of the Bahamas. And Mike Roberts calls a traveling violation, says we're going the other way. 12.03 on the clock. Oh, check that. It was an offensive foul on Coleman. So it'll be West Virginia basketball. Second foul on starting point guard Matt Coleman, who's going to have to go to the bench. Number four in white, Miles McBride, bringing the brawl up for the Mountaineers. And he has been really coming on strong in Big 12 play. Eight straight games in double digits, and he's averaging over 13 a game in the Big 12 play. Well, we have a quick timeout on the floor. When we come back, a future Hall of Famer in our midst. Bob Huggins now in his 38th season as a Division I head coach. It started back in the mid-80s in Akron. Then he moved to Cincinnati where he led the Bearcats to a Final Four berth. Moved on to the Big 12 in Kansas State for one season. And now Country Roads has taken him back home. He's at his alma mater, West Virginia, where he graduated in 1977. His 13th season overall as the Mountaineers head coach. He is a 2020 Hall of Fame candidate, and in my humble opinion, he should be there. He's fourth among active winningest coaches and eighth among all-time winningest coaches. McBride misses as the buzzer sounds, but an offensive putback. Oscar Shibwe almost had a chance at one, but he got fouled, and Shibwe He's going to give the Mountaineers an extra possession. That's going to be the second foul on Jericho Sims, so to the bench he goes. Well, that's already the seventh team foul for the Texas Longhorns, so that sends Oscar Shibwe to the free throw line. Nice looking stroke from the big man. He's two for three from the street stripe tonight. Shibwe, the preseason Big 12 freshman of the year, and he's done nothing to make those prognosticators look bad. Knocks them both down. He has three points, and the lead is six for West Virginia. Now we see some full court pressure for the first time. Again, no more press Virginia for Bob Huggins, but he will harass you with some full court pressure from time to time. And also, I mean, it helps when you play 12 players. He just wears you down. So the last five, 10 minutes, if you're only playing seven guys, you're tired. You gotta be in great shape in order to play this Mountaineer team. Here's Andrew Jones. Fedris with six on the shot clock. Another ill-advised shot by Jace Febris. It goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Mountaineers basketball. They're living with that shot nine times out of ten. Jace Febris, is a, he's a really good catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. But when he has to put the ball on the floor, no matter if it's once or twice, that's just not his game. That gets him out of his rhythm. And West Virginia is living with that three by Febris. And again, the numbers aren't that bad for Texas so far. Three for six from three-point land, but... West Virginia is doing their damage in the paint. There's Chase Harler, had it knocked away, saved by Culver. Now 10 on the shot clock. And a foul on the floor, but again, it'll be free throws for the Mountaineers who are in the bonus already, and there's still 10.39 to go in the first half. Oscar 
Shigwe at the line, misses the front end of the one and one. And it goes out of bounds, it'll be Texas basketball. Texas hasn't gotten to the line yet. Seven times already to strike for the Mountaineers. Dribble handoff, Kai Jones gets it back. And look at the Mountaineers, they are up in the chest of the Texas offensive players. I think that the Texas bigs need to be lifted right now because I think Texas's guards are athletic enough and good enough to be able to finish over the guards of West Virginia. When you say lifted, what do you mean by that? They need to get the bigs away from the rim, get Sheevoy and Cobra, because that's ultimately what makes that defense so great. When you drive to the rim, you have to see two, not one, but two big bodies at all times. Culver facing up baseline. And it's gonna be a West Virginia turnover the first of the night. Well, our Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN features two of the top 15 teams in the nation. John Calipari and number 15, Kentucky, hosting Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards and Georgia at Rupp Arena at 7 Eastern. Then Miami squaring off against Coach K and number 8, Duke at Cameron Indoor. Speaking of Kentucky, I know you're very familiar with the Dallas kid who's playing there, Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey, like a, like a little brother to me. From the Dallas area, really talented, averaging 14 points per game this year. Having a great year for Kentucky. Uh, one of them fantastic freshmen we see every year that Coach Cal produces. Well, we talk about West Virginia's defense, fourth in all of Division I in field goal percentage defense. They're second in the nation in that category against the three. And tonight, they're doing it again. Here's Jones for three. Too strong. Shibwe tried to run with it before he got it, but Matthews gets on the deck. Culver, elbow jumper. That's not his shot. Offensive rebound. What else is new? And a timeout on the floor by Shaka Smart and the Longhorns. 14th ranked West Virginia has themselves an eight point lead at home against the Longhorns. Well, the Big 12 might only have 10 teams in their league, but they've got four teams in the AP Top 25 led by number one Baylor Number three, Kansas. West Virginia's up at number 14. And then, of course, the Texas Tech Red Raiders are 18th in the country. That's a traveling violation. And again, the turnover bug biting the Texas Longhorns. Well, there's a look at the AP poll we were just talking about in the top 10. Well represented by the Big 12 in the top there. Shibwe lines it up and knocks it down. First field goal of the night for the 6'9 freshman. Largest lead of the game for the Mountaineers. Nice cut. Extra pass, Kai Jones with the throwdown. Count it and one for Kai Jones. What an answer. Oh. Oh, my. It all started by Ramey. That was a great find. Way to draw Sheepway up. Now it's Kai Jones against Miles McBride. And any day, any, any day, Kai Jones is winning that battle. Great story, Kai Jones, recruited out of the Bahamas. Really, track and field was his best sport. He got cut from his eighth grade basketball team. Granted, he was only 5'11 at the time. <laughs> Had a huge growth spurt in high school, but just still learning how to play the sport. I mean, you could tell that track and field was a good sport for him. He's skinny and he's super athletic. I feel like he'd be a great hurdler or probably be pretty fast too. Hey, hey, hey. 
There's McCabe. He has got crazy handles. If you've ever seen any of his YouTube videos, Matthews, that one looked good. Offensive rebound, Shibwe. In traffic, just kind of threw it up there. <laughs> and that freshman will learn what to do with the ball in that situation. Instead, he'll go to the line. We'll be back in Morgantown right after this. Well, it's coming up this Saturday, the seventh edition of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. I'll be on the Plains in Auburn as number 16 Auburn takes on Iowa State. Any of these games jump out of you that you're most excited to watch? Definitely Kentucky versus Texas Tech. We mentioned Tyrese Maxey earlier in the broadcast. I think him versus Kyler Edwards will be a very, very intriguing matchup. Tennessee and Kansas also. A couple of Hall of Fame caliber coaches, Rick Barnes, Bill Self. Yeah. Shibwe, who's best. been living at the line, knocks down the first free throw there. He has six points. It's a nine-point West Virginia lead. Coming in ranked 14th in the nation, ranked ninth in the net standings, which talks a lot about quad wins, and quad one wins are what every team covets this time of year. Well. There's only two teams in the nation that have more quad one wins than these West Virginia Mountaineers. That would be Kansas and Seton Hall. So a really good resume for Bob Huggins and company. Haley picks it up and puts it in. Some really good shooting offensively so far from West Virginia. Most of it coming from close range. They're over 53% so far from the field. Seemed like West Virginia might be back in action tonight. Coleman kicks it to Hepa. Open look, too strong. Another rebound from Shibwe, and he rips it away. Those are the looks that if you're Texas, you have to make if you want any chance of winning this ball game. Shibwe already stuffing the stat sheet, seven points, four rebounds, and so is his fellow Twin Tower, Derek Culver, who has his fourth point of the night. A 14-2, Mountaineers run. If you're Texas, you cannot leave Kamaka Hepa one-on-one -on -one against Derek Culver. It's just not fair. You have to help and double. And Ramey has the ball go out of bounds, an unforced error by the Longhorns. You must double and get the ball out of his hands because he is scoring eight times out of ten on Hepa every single day. Derek Culver came into this game 14 of his last 22 field goals in his last four games. He's off to a good start here for the Mountaineers. Here's McCabe, catch and release. Yes! Jordan McCabe with the three-pointer. Virginia. This is a great sign for the West Virginia basketball team. McCabe and Matthews are starting to feel it and starting to get their mojo back. Those are two youngsters who have struggled mightily offensively, but not tonight against Texas. Well, coming up on Wednesday night, Zion Williamson making his long-awaited debut for the Pelicans. But first, it's the Raptors and the Sixers in an Eastern Conference matchup at 7 Eastern. Then it is finally Zion time when New Orleans takes on the Spurs at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Both games on ESPN, so you can watch it anywhere because it's on the ESPN app. Also, Zion, last year's College Player of the Year. A little bit of a tougher question this year. Who do you think is your Player of the Year right now in college? My Player of the Year in college, I'm going with Miles Powell from Seton Hall, an elite bucket getter. Matthews, tough take, but he got fouled and will go to the line. And it Matthews aggressive on the offensive end. How about this for a turnaround for this West Virginia offense? Emmett Matthews, who was their best offensive player at the end of last year, is 3 for 17 in Big 12 play coming in from the field. He already has two field goals tonight. This kid is talented. I, I witnessed him in person score 22 at Pittsburgh, took, completely took over the game and dominated that, dominated that whole Pittsburgh team. And the Emmett Matthews that I've been seeing the past three, four games, 
It's not that same Emmett Matthews. Even when I was playing at Baylor last year, we played against him. And seeing him in the Big 12 tournament, that's just not the same Emmett Matthews that I've been seeing recently. But now it looks like he's starting to get his confidence back, get his groove back, and that's a great sign for this team. Matthews missed them both. Much to the consternation of Huggy Bear. Team not very good from the free throw line, shooting at a 64% clip. That's a kickball out of bounds. It'll stay Texas basketball. Well, 5.44 on the clock. This game so far dominated by West Virginia. What does Shaka Smart have to do to stem the tide and start to turn things around? As we talked about earlier, I think he needs to try to lift the bigs a little bit, but also he just needs to get his team calmed down. It looks like they're, they're, they're playing way too fast, and they're playing at the pace of West Virginia. Look at the shot that Randy just took. That's, That's a, a shot that West Virginia wants you to yeah, take. A near impossible make. You, you need to slow down and play at your pace. That's the biggest thing against West Virginia. Do not play to their pace. Only one field goal for the Longhorns over the course of the last seven plus minutes. That one off the hands of Culver, out of bounds. It'll be Texas basketball. And Oscar Shibwe is set to check back in for Derek Culver. I also think, I was just about to say this, I also think that you need to get Matt Coleman back in the game because with this team, he, he, he's the floor general. He runs everything, and without him, they, they tend to sort of take those bad shots and speed up. So you definitely need Matt Coleman back in this game to calm things down. Coleman attacks, kicks it out. Hepa can't hit the open three. Haley baseline, can't get it to go. Out of bounds off the hands. It looked like it was off the hands of Jericho Sims, but Jerry Pollard says it's Texas basketball. And Bob Huggins can't believe it. Oh, that yeah. looked like it was clearly off yeah, Sims. Clearly off Jericho Sims. Should have been West Virginia's basketball. Well, Bob's got an argument there. Everest catch and shoot. Still can't find the bottom of the bucket. So Jace Febris just one for four from the field in the first half. Oh, Saboyan aggressive. And it goes. They back up so far that it gives him a runway and his body is so strong, he can finish. He can shoot the eight to 10 footer, but he could also get to the cup because of his strong frame. You know, he's, he's not a bad offensive player. Teams completely disrespect him, but this kid can play. He's not here for, for no reason. In fairness, I think everybody looks at what he does on the defensive end and it overshadows everything. He might be minute for minute the best defensive player in the big 12 he's got 84 deflections and 13 charges taken coming into this game but now we're seeing a little bit of an offensive blossoming from gabe osaboyan who's got seven points tonight yeah definitely but when you back up to the the charge circle almost below the big 12 logo anybody can score on you then he, he's not a bad basketball player and teams treat him like he's a bad basketball player a 20 to 2 west virginia run they're up by 20, and we've got a foul on the floor on Oscar Shibwe. That's going to be the second foul on Shibwe. Immediately, Bob Hagen. Huggins goes to his bench, and Logan Rout will take his place. Why is West Virginia's defense so suffocating, King? Well, not only the fact that they're long, but they deny the they deny the wings, and they speed you up and force you to play at their pace, like we talked about earlier. And they help defense; they close the gaps and shrink the floor, making you two shoot tough shots over length. 
Well, we have our final media timeout of the first half. A 20-point lead for 14th ranked West Virginia. By former Mountaineer football player Eugene Napoleon, the highlight of the morning was the university's presentation of an MLK Achievement Award to a retiring civil servant who's been a lifetime advocate for people with disabilities and more recently, independent living for the elderly. Alongside King McClure, Rich Hollenberg, Great to have you joining us on Big Monday on ESPNU. Bob Huggins and the Mountaineers up 20 on the Texas Longhorns, 35 to 15 with 357 to go in the first half. And all the key West Virginia stats, the things that they pride themselves on, their tent poles, if you will, they are dominating in King. Points off turnovers, 12-0 West Virginia. Points in the paint, 14-6 West Virginia. And second chance points, 7-zip West Virginia. That's a typical West Virginia defense. I mean, they're holding Texas right now three for three for 11 from three, 27 percent, a little high in their in their eyes. Um, you know, they typically hold teams at 25 percent, but 27 is still great. But that's just that's just what they do. And Matthews converts on the first one. He has seven. Balanced scoring from the Mountaineers who are shooting over 56% from the field as a team. They've got seven from Matthews, six from Shibwe, five from Jordan McCabe, six from Jermaine Haley, and seven from Gabe Osaboyan. And now eight from Matthews. So he's your game high scorer, and it is now a 22 point cushion for the Mountaineers. And some more pressure. Here's Donovan Williams. Seldom used freshman, number four in orange. With seven on the shot clock. He's aggressive off the window, no good. And McCabe comes away with it for West Virginia. High post Haley, inside route. And Logan Rout muscling up against Jericho Sims, and it's going to be a foul on Sims. If so, that's number three on the big man for Texas. They're just so physical. All of West Virginia's bigs are so physical right there. Logan Rout drew the contact. Jericho Sims was just trying to, just trying to maintain his position and ended up fouling because he didn't want to get knocked back. But... West Virginia is just being so much more physical than this Texas team right well, now. King, we talked about balanced scoring for West Virginia. It's balanced fouling for the Texas Longhorns. So the bad news gets worse for Shaka Smart and company. His starting point guard, starting stretch four, and starting big man all have three fouls in the first half. It's not a good sign. Just hope that they can get out of here without a 30-point lead. One for two for Logan Rout playing in his 91st career game as a Mountaineer. Turnover. McCain, the follow by Haley. Twenty-five to two is the run that West Virginia is currently on with under three minutes to go in the first half. Texas just looks like they don't know what just hit them right now. They, they look shocked like they've never seen this before, which I mean, honestly, they probably have it with this defense being so great. Ten on the shot clock. Bad pass by Jones. Here comes McCabe, but a foul is called first. That's going to go on Royce Ham. Another Longhorn with three fouls. The press is working tonight. Jordan McCabe with a great steal. And, hey, Jermaine Haley just playing West Virginia basketball, finishing with a great tip in. Derek Holmes at the free throw line for the Mountaineers. Shooting two. So Derek Culver steps to the line. It's been a parade of free throws for the West Virginia Mountaineers. The left-hander knocks down the first one. And it is certainly a frustrating night for Shaka Smart. You got to feel for these young Longhorns. 
having to play number three Texas on or Kansas on Saturday, and then two days later turn around, make the toughest road trip of the Big 12 season to West Virginia, and have to take on one of the toughest defenses in the nation. Hey, I know how they feel. <laughs> I've been down by 25, 26 at halftime, trying to fight my way back, but only difference was I'm seeing Javon Carter and, and Daxter Miles all game, 94 feet, everywhere I go. Ramey with the quick three, too short. Here's Harlan, aggressive to the hole. Culver, the offensive rebound. Spin move, no good. Haley, no. And route clears for him. Right now, they're just punking Texas right now. Just absolutely punishing them on the glass. Tough shot by McCain. That's mixtape worthy, King. <laughs> a 20 zip West Virginia run capped by a circus shot by number five, Jordan McCain. This is a great sign. Jordan McCain getting his mojo back. I see you, young fella. Well, with a timeout on the floor, let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. And there are three such nominees in the Big 12. The big man for Kansas, Yudoka Azubuki, leads the nation with a 78% field goal percentage. His point guard, Devon Dotson, leading the Big 12 in scoring at over 18 a game. And then there's Mr. Triple-Double, Tyrese Halliburton, who had a triple-double to open Big 12 play. The sophomore guard from Ames, Iowa, sixth in Division I basketball, averaging over seven assists per game. Those are all good offensive numbers for those three. I think defense has really told the story so far in the Big 12. Yeah, most definitely. It's all about defense. The, the, the best defensive teams in the 12 are the best teams in the 12. When you look at Kansas, West Virginia, and Baylor, they're easily the three best teams in this conference, and they, they lock down. Well, Gerald Liddell thankfully ends a 20 to nothing run by West Virginia with the bump in the bucket. He'll go to the line for a three-point play. Liddell just 11 for 24 from the free throw line so far this season. Jordan McCain goes to the bench and gets a rounding, rousing round of applause from the Mountaineer faithful. Good first half by the starting point guard for Bob Huggins. Seven points for McCain. His season high is just nine. I mean, I, I knew his struggles weren't going to last long because before shoot around, he's here 45 minutes before getting up 100, 200 shots. After shoot around, he stays an extra 30 minutes getting up shots. It was just, you know, it was going to happen sooner or later. And I'm glad that it's finally paying off for him because he's definitely put in the work. I've seen it with my own eyes, and he deserves it. And the coaches recognize that, too. We were talking to them about this relatively young West Virginia team. McCabe's only a sophomore. They said he is one of the undisputed leaders in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, you can just tell. He, he has a very mature type of, you know, presence about him. He, he acts like he's older than what he really is. He even has a podcast, and not too many people his age can do that. Derek Culver, just a man among boys on the offensive boards. He's got seven. The balance scoring from West Virginia, one of the main storylines, but rebounds another big one, dominating on the glass over the Longhorns. We've got a jump ball. It's going to be possession arrow, West Virginia. Well, our graphic says it's West Virginia ball. The officials are saying that it is Texas basketball. So the Longhorns will have the ball with just a few ticks under one minute to go in the first half, a first half dominated by the Mountaineers. called on Courtney Ramey caused by that West Virginia defense. He had nowhere to go. When you have a 6'7 guard guarding you and a 6'9, 6'10 big in a trap and they won't let you through, you have absolutely nowhere to go but backwards and that's what he did. 
Well, it's a use it or lose it timeout for Bob Huggins. No real reason to call timeout when your team's up 45-18, but 48 seconds left, you might as well give your players a little bit of a blow, and they deserve it. It's a great, great trap. He has nowhere to go. They, he didn't, they did not let the defender, I mean the offensive player, split through. He had absolutely nowhere to go in that trap. A dominating performance on both ends of the floor for the West Virginia Mountaineers. So you very honestly and candidly shared with us, you've been in games like this before where you've been on the losing end. What happens in the locker room if you're Texas to try to come back in the second half and at least make a game of this? Well, you already know your coach is not going to be happy. So you, you have to hear the coach. But I think what's more important is the players rallying together. I think Matt Coleman and one of the upperclassmen has to come in there and keep everybody composed, keep everybody calm. And, you know, you've seen crazy things in college basketball. Maybe down by 30 in the first half. I've came back from that before. Uh, there's plenty of teams that come and came back from that. It's not impossible. So the upperclassmen have to rally the team together and just get the troops going. Well, Will Baker, a promising young freshman big man for Shaka Smart on the floor and immediately gets called for the foul, sending Derek Culver to line for two shots. Culver, seven points, six rebounds. Well on his way to another double-double this season. And if he could knock down free throws, King, he would be a first-team All-Big 12 type player. If he could knock down free throws, he's looking at 10 points at minimum every single game. He's walking into 10 points if he could just make free throws. Shooting 60% from the free throw line. He's only made one so far tonight. Good hustle at the other end. Ramey with the easy two. Now 18 seconds left in the half. It'll be last shot time for West Virginia, who has put on a dominating performance at both ends of the floor in the first half from WVU Coliseum. Five seconds to go. Oh, Saboyan. No, and time's going to run out in the first half. Well, the 20 points scored by Texas, their lowest scoring first half of the season. Number 14, West Virginia, 45, Texas 20 at the break. After the break, Kevin Connors, Dalen Cup, Sean Farnham will be talking about the wooden watch on our halftime report here on Martin Luther King Jr. Day from West Virginia. Welcome back to Big Monday, presented by Boost Mobile on ESPNU here in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineer Maniacs are psyched. Their 14th ranked Mountaineers are up 45-20 on the Texas Longhorns in a Big 12 battle. Back inside WVU Coliseum alongside King McClure, I'm Rich Hollenberg. It has been a dominating performance, not just on the defensive end for West Virginia, but on the offensive end as well. Yeah, something that West Virginia fans have not seen in a minute, but they love to see it. Huge contributions to Emmett Matthews, eight points. Jordan McKay, seven points. And, and everybody else has been scoring too. He even gave us a point. We even saw the return of Press Virginia at times. They forced 12 Texas turnovers in the first half. Hey, another thing that West Virginia fans have not seen this year is that Press Virginia that they're used to seeing. But it worked this half. It might, hopefully, I mean, I don't know, it might work this next half, but I guess we're going to see. Well, here are some key numbers from that first half, and it's all bad for Texas, including foul trouble. Four players, including three starters, have been saddled with three fouls. Balance scoring, as we said, from West Virginia. Six players have scored at least seven points, and the Mountaineers ended the first half on a 30-7 to run. It was the lowest scoring first half of the season for Texas, and two points shy of being the highest scoring first half of the season for West Virginia. Mountaineers start the second half with the ball. There's Jordan McCabe, number five in white, running the point for Bob Huggins. Inside, easy bucket. Same old, same old for the Mountaineers. That's, that, that's just too easy, Rich. <laughs> How do you expect to get back in this game with easy buckets like that? They, they definitely have to change that ASAP. Nice look. Sims, but Ramey can't pay it off. You know, it's funny because 
Bob Huggins was the one telling us this earlier today in practice. He said there are going to be about five games on every season schedule where you look and you say, I, I just can't figure it out. I, I don't have an explanation for it. He chalked their Kansas State loss on Saturday up to can't figure it out. Yeah. I have a feeling Shaka Smart might say that about this game. Well, I can help him a little bit. It's the defense for sure. The defense of West Virginia is just that good. With three to shoot. And Matthews put on the surprised face when he was called for that foul, but Jace Fevers is going to go to the line and shoot. And Bob Huggins is checking the Jumbotron at the center court above West Virginia Coliseum to see if he has any kind of debate on that call. Nevertheless, Jace Fevers at the line shooting, and he makes the first. Well, it has been a nightmarish shooting first half for the Texas Longhorns. There are three guards who start for them, Fevers being one, Ramey the other, and of course the point guard, Matt Coleman, came into this game shooting 46% from three in their last three games. Not the story that we're seeing tonight. They're just not getting those same open looks that they're used to getting because of the length and the athleticism of this West Virginia team. It's, it's just not the same. Now some pressure to try and mix things up, but it's solved by McCabe and company. Good hands getting up the line by Corey Ramey. He picks off the pass. Andrew Jones starting the second half. The rebound goes out of bounds. It's going to stay Texas basketball. McCabe went to the deck. And the loose ball out of bounds. Joe DeRosa says it's going to be West Virginia basketball. I thought that was a charge. That was actually great defense by Jordan McCabe. Should have been called a charge. You know, sometimes with the emphasis being put on acknowledging whether a flop happened or not, I feel like you end up with a no call. Could yeah, have been that, a charge, could have been a flop. Instead, yeah, that, no whistle at all. That's definitely a charge. He, he beat him to the spot and took it in the chest. That's, that's going the other way. That foul is going to go on Andrew Jones. And what do we see from this one in the replay? He was clearly sliding over. That's, that's a great call. It's a block. And more importantly, Jermaine Haley didn't really extend yeah. that elbow, right? Didn't extend. And now Haley having to go to the sidelines and get attended to. Maybe some blood on that right arm near the elbow for Jermaine Haley. And he can't check out because Jermaine Haley's got to shoot free throws. Actually, check that. It looks like they're going to be inbounding the ball under their own basket. Haley, one of those six Mountaineers with seven points or more. As a matter of fact, he's leading all scores right now in double digits with 10. I think the reason why he's such a good scorer is because he's a one like a point guard shooting guard but he's six seven so a lot of times shooting guards and point guards aren't used to boxing out big guys like that he's really a, a prototypical small forward size of wing and you're not used to to blocking out somebody of that size so he's able to get offensive rebounds and easy putbacks here's Ramey changes direction Kai Jones and it's a loose ball. And look at the smallest player on the floor, Jordan McCabe, fighting his way through the scrum to get to the ball. It's going to be possession arrow, Texas. How much does the Mountaineer stock rise when you see them playing this well offensively? It's, 
it's a whole different ball game when they can make shots because when you put in an amazing defense with a team who can also knock down shots at a consistent rate, now you go from Sweet 16 to Final Four potential championship team. And that was a great look ahead by Jordan McCabe, who I think Derek Culver will tell you, he robbed him of an assist there because Culver couldn't come up with what looked like it could have been an easy bucket. Well, here's your scoring leaders so far. Again, sharing the sugar. The West Virginia Mountaineers. Six uh -oh. different players averaging seven or more, getting seven or more points tonight. Andrew Jones, fantastic story coming up on two years removed from a diagnosis of leukemia. You knew him well from back in your Texas days. Yeah, we, we basically grew up together. I grew up playing against him his whole life, seeing him since he was like 10 years old. He was a grade below me, but when I heard the news he had leukemia, you know, I, I was really heartbroken because I, as one of my boys and you never want to see one of your boys go through something that hard. But I, mean, I definitely reached out to him because I, I had overcame not not something similar, but an adversity of my own and tried to give him encouraging words. And he, and he took him and he overcame his. So I'm, I'm proud of him and I'm, I'm so happy to see him back on the court. And he's been a, a solid contributor this year. Basically spending two years as a red shirt on the sidelines watching and he still has about 10 pounds to gain what the coaching yeah. staff is telling us But he can go out there and knock down a three people forget he was a McDonald's All-American coming out of Texas no, th th This kid can really legit play this kid can hope he is really really talented and before When he was coming out of high school before he got to Texas He was one of the best players in America like you just said a McDonald's All-American so this kid is legit don't, don't get it twisted this kid can hoop. He's just battling and trying to overcome something that majority of the people in the world could not overcome. After a career night against Texas at home, Jericho Sims is taking his medicine against these West Virginia big men. Sims had 20 points, that's a career high, on nine for 14 from the field. The Texas coaching staff telling us they'd love to get Jericho Sims at least 10 field goal attempts a game. That's how valuable they think he could be. Tonight, he's been held to just two points, though. Yeah, they, they did a great job scouting. I feel like that was definitely an emphasis in the scouting report. They saw what he did against Azubuke and didn't want it to repeat and, and carry over this game. Just one for four from the field for Jericho Sims, who's going to get another shot at the free throw line. Interesting note on Sims as we watch him at the free throw line. He's going to be shooting his free throws right-handed. He used to shoot them left-handed. Last year, they changed his shooting stroke from a lefty to a righty, if you could believe that. In college, they changed it, and they said he's ambidextrous, basically. He just looked better shooting it right-handed, and he's improved his free throw percentage. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> there's no way I can shoot free throws left-handed. I mean, I shoot it right-handed, but there's no way I can switch hands in college. That, 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 that's unheard of. Culver leans in. Gets the foul call. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Jericho Sims, adding to a night of utter frustration for not only Sims, but the rest of this Texas team. So Culver's at the line, shooting two. Free throws have been the one flying the ointment for the big man out of Youngstown, Ohio, Derek Culver. But he makes that one, giving eight points on the night. And the fouls continue to mount for Shaka Smart's program. Sims the first to four fouls now. And Culver goes two for two from the free throw line. I think it's interesting that we have not seen Matt Coleman yet. I'm a little confused about that because Maybe a little bit of a message being sent. He does have three fouls as well. But but he's a, he's a floor general. At this point, you're down by 25. You want to have any chance of getting back in this game. You're going to need him out there to make that run. First four minutes gone by in the second half. 
There's a fadeaway jumper from Kai Jones, no good. Out of bounds, it'll be West Virginia ball in our first media timeout of the second half with West Virginia rolling over Texas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. All of us around the nation celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day as part of West Virginia's celebration. The school and some of its students taking part in a number of community service projects around campus and Morgantown. Of those, some Mountaineer athletes bringing smiles and a helping hand to residents of a local nursing home during lunchtime. Great to see the WVU student athletes thinking outside the world of just their college athletics. Great job by all of them here in Morgantown, and I'm sure student athletes across the country practicing in kind. Rich Hollenberg, King McClure, the rest of the ESPNU crew, coming to you from Morgantown, where Country Roads are leading the Mountaineers home. It's a huge lead with 15.53 to go from WVU Coliseum. Quick timeout. It's now time. We're back in Morgantown on Big Monday, presented by Boost Mobile in a Big 12 matchup that hasn't been much of a matchup at all. 14th ranked West Virginia dominating Texas. Here's three reasons why. Points on turnovers, points in the paint, and second chance points, all a whitewash in favor of the Mountaineers, King. When we talked to Shaka Smart in the shoot around, his biggest concern was rebounding, and that has definitely been the story tonight. Can his team keep up rebounding with this great West Virginia team? Tash Sherman getting his first action on the floor. Nice dime to Jermaine Haley, who leads all scorers with a dozen. And that's out of a timeout. You're looking for effort and energy from Texas, and you don't get it. Here's Will Baker. Wild left-hand hook shot off the mark, and McCabe clears on the left side. Culver. He's got some nice looking moves once he gets two feet in the paint. Yeah, he. His post game is really, really, really something that most people don't talk about. I think he's. A, I mean, he's a great rebounder, and you know, he, he he punishes people, but he he can really post up. He can really he really has great finesse moves, and I think another area of his game that people don't talk about is his passing. He's really not a bad passer. He can actually pass out the post when he gets double. Because he's faced the double so many times, he has to pass out of it. So he he can really play. He can really hoop. He just has to be more consistent, especially offensively. He's got one assist tonight. But more importantly for him and this West Virginia team, he has six rebounds and makes another free throw. So that's four straight free throws made by Derek Culver. Giving him 11 on the night. At the other end, it's Matt Coleman. Wide open three. McCabe, that one looked good off his hand. It touched every part of the rim and just bounced out. Right there with that possession, when McCabe shot the ball, if you notice, everybody's head on Texas team was looking towards the rim. They were all ball watching, as we call it. With this West Virginia team, you have to—you can't ball watch. You have to just go look for bodies and go hit, because if, if not, they're going to overpower you and get the rebound. What a shot by Derek Culver. He looked like a Kim Olajuwon on that one. He really has good post moves. He can really play. He's a really talented player down low. A game-high 13 for Derek Culver, number one in white. And now Royce Ham might have gotten away with one. Draws the foul instead. Oh. Let's take a look at Derek Culver in the low post. A little shimmy. Give me that. Come here. Oh, good bucket by Derek Culver, the monster. This is a young man who, as a freshman, had eight double-doubles in conference play one year ago. Derek Kova was no joke. Having to go against him, having to play against him, even though he was a freshman. It's, it's kind of crazy because you see freshmen on the, on the 
on the on the on the roster on on the the, the race leader the, the scout report. You see a freshman on a scout report, and you think, oh, he's just a freshman. He he's not he's not that aggressive. He's not that tough. He's not that physical. But you play against this kid last year, and he's bullying our big man <laughs> and taking us one on two. And he you can tell this kid's gonna be special just by playing against him his freshman year. Taz Sherman got fouled on the way to the hoop. Interesting to note, Taz Sherman with the number 12 on his jersey. You mentioned this earlier, King. Bob Huggins not afraid to use 12 rotation players in any given game and uses it to his advantage. Taz Sherman, one of them that gets sporadic minutes. But if you're looking for instant offense, Taz Sherman came off of a JUCO season where he was fourth in the country in scoring at the junior college, college level. Averaged 26 a game last year. He definitely gets buckets, but his teammate that comes off the bench with him, McNeil, was first in the country in That's scoring right. in Juco. 29.7 last year. And so, McNeil hasn't even gotten on the floor tonight. So when you talk about instant offense and playing 12 guys, I mean, you're, you're looking at your, your seventh, eighth men are bucket getters <laughs> and they're elite so i mean this team is deep and that's why another reason why they're so good there's sherman with the steal and miles mcbride comes away with it in the corner oh and logan route goes down and he was tangled up with donovan williams i don't think that was intentional at all but they got tangled up and couldn't get untangled on the way to the deck. So that'll be the second foul on Donovan Williams. Nothing intentional. And Logan Rout might be having flashbacks to his high school quarterbacking days thinking he was getting sacked just now. I still can't believe he was a high school quarterback. <laughs> So they are going to review it to see if it was a flagrant run. From my eyes in real time, it didn't look like Donovan Williams intended to do that at all. I think Donovan Williams did did what, what we talked about earlier, found somebody and just tried to box him out. It was a clean play. Now the problem is it, it, it could be yeah, called it, a hook and hold. It could. And if it's a hook and hold, yeah. then it is automatically a flagrant one. Yeah, so that is the good yeah, call that, by that our, could be veteran, a hook and hold, yeah. our veteran officiating crew, Joe DeRosa, Mike Roberts. Jerry Pollard, they're all in there, and that was an easy one when you yes. saw the replay. I mean, I, see, my thing about the whole hook and hold is I, I see what they're trying to do, but I don't necessarily agree with it because sometimes it, it just happens. It's not intentional. You're not trying to hurt the person, but it just happens, especially you being a, a guard who has to box out bigger guys like that. You just happen to get tangled. So I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the hook and hold. Really. So that sends Logan Route to the line. He'll shoot two free throws, and then West Virginia will have the basketball. Well, our big Monday tonight continues on ESPN with another Big 12 matchup at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Oklahoma going to Waco to take on the number one Baylor Bears. Baylor coming on the heels of 14 straight wins, and they jumped over Gonzaga for number one in the polls. From what you've seen so far, trying to be as impartial as you can be, as a former Baylor Bear yourself, do you think they deserve the number one overall ranking right now? I do. I do. I, I think they deserve the number one ranking because the loss that they had to Washington, they were up. They played 38 minutes better than Washington did. Dominated that whole game. Last two, as we see Jericho Sims pick up his fifth and foul out, but they dominated that game all the way up until the last two minutes, and that's their only loss of the season. So. Well, this will do it for Jericho Sims, called for his fifth foul on the night in what is one of the most forgettable of his career in Austin. Coming off what is probably the best game of his career this past Saturday against the Jayhawks. Well, there will be better and brighter days for number 20 in orange, Jericho Sims. But tonight, he was punched by this West Virginia defense. Yeah, I just think if you're going to foul out, use it on a, a block or something. 
Whoa. Or something, you know, not 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 a little tic tac foul like that. Don't 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 foul out that way. Don't go outside like that. Nice feed from Sherman. Hey. And Chase Holder's in the scoring call. It should not go unmentioned how Gabe Osavoyan started that play in transition by diving on the floor. That young man is a walking floor burn. Walking floor burn. You know, interesting debate for you. I got a question for you. Who is a better, a better all-around defender out of Mark Vital from Baylor or Gabe Osavoyan from West Virginia? Ooh. That's a tough call because I feel like they are different types of defenders. I mean, look at the the stats for Osaboyan. And the 80 plus deflections, the charges taken. I would say if I'm guarding a guard, Gabe Osaboyan's my guy. Uh -huh. If it's anyone on the front line, give me Mark Vital. How's that for a hedge? Okay. I can see that. I can see that. I can see that one because I I've seen Mark Vidal make some really impressive defensive stops uh, the other day against Halliburton. They played Iowa State. That's why I feel like they're kind of similar. But I think Mark rebounds a little better. But as far as defense goes, both of those guys are really defensive. Well, even when things start clicking offensively for Texas, West Virginia has an answer. This is a good bucket by Logan Brown. Just get flat, easy transition bucket that started by the, the false pressure of Texas. So good bucket by Logan Brown. Ten different West Virginia Mountaineers are in the scoring column. And uh, Sherman now has his first field goal tonight. Chris, this is about to get ugly. About to? I mean... <laughs> Look, I know it's pretty bad, but I feel like this is just headed for <laughs> something really, really bad. Well, now the threes start raining down for Texas. Will Baker's even tried a couple. And he, the coaching staff ensures us that he's a good three-point shooter. Fabulous freshman. Look out for Miles McBride, West Virginia Mountaineers. Well, here's some Big 12 news and notes for you. Four teams in the AP Top 25, led by number one, Baylor, number three, Kansas. These West Virginia Mountaineers are 14, and Texas Tech is 18. Baylor playing home to Oklahoma later tonight on Big Monday, riding a 14-game winning streak. Yudoka Azubuki leads all big men and all players in the nation with a 78% field goal percentage, and Kansas has the toughest strength of schedule in the nation. The next best, these West Virginia Mountaineers, number two in the nation in strength of schedule. Just looking back at West Virginia's home dominance this year, their last home game, which we were here for last week against TCU, they won that bit game by 32. Earlier, they beat Texas Tech, a top 25 team, by a dozen. So they are mauling the Texas teams in the Big 12 on their home floor. What is What makes it so difficult to play here if you're a visiting team? So, like you just mentioned, this is not an easy place to play. This is one of the harder places to play in the Big 12. But I think because of their pressure defense, because they speed you up, and if you mix that with the crowd, you have so many thoughts running through your head. When I was playing, I had so many thoughts running through my head. There's fans, their, their student section is crazy every game. They're always screaming at you. It's loud in here. And on top of that, you have somebody breathing down your neck the whole 40 minutes. So it, it just creates constant havoc, constant chaos in your brain. And you really can't think. 15,000 plus inside WVU Coliseum. And the student section is known as the Mountaineer Maniacs. And they have been heard at full throat tonight. As a matter of fact, just about every Big 12 home game, I believe, has already been deemed a sellout. They are very excited about the 
reemergence, if you will, of this West Virginia team coming off a season last year that was one of, if not the most forgettable. They went 15 and 21 last year and were just 11 and 7 at home. As a matter of fact, it was almost a year to the date that this West Virginia team got pumped by Texas by 22. I definitely think, you know, if I was a coach, I'm, I'm showing that film. We we got pumped last year. We cannot let that happen this year. Taz Sherman with seven points all coming in the second half to continue the balanced score. Coming up at 11 Eastern on ESPN, it's Sports Center with Kenny Main and John Anderson. Tim Legler will break down the Lakers Celtics and have more on how Zion Williamson will fit in with the Pelicans. Plus, the Chiefs and Niners' road to Super Bowl 54 begins. Sports Center on ESPN tonight on ESPN with Kenny Main and John Anderson. Here's Brock Cunningham, who hasn't gotten much time at Big 12 play, but in a 75-34 game. You better believe that some of the seldom used players on the Texas bench are going to be seeing some playing time. You could say the same thing about Bob Huggins' reserves as well. Might even see the walk-on for for West Virginia. They wanted all the, the Mountaineer fans love. Here's Sean McNeil. Eleven Mountaineers have scored tonight. A 41-point lead for West Virginia. Matt Coleman, step back, no good. And it's grabbed by Culver. So now 13 points, eight rebounds for Derek Culver. Culver spins and it's blocked by Kai Jones. Jones threw it away. Look at Shibway. Hustling to get it back. Oh! Oh, my. And the smile from Shibwe on the way down. My goodness. Oh. He my ran 94 goodness. feet to get the ball and then finished with a slam. You talk about effort. The, the effort. He's not supposed to get that ball in the corner. Then caps it off with the amazing slap. That when you talk about NBA, that's a that's a play right there that NBA scouts look at and say, wow. That is SC Top 10 written all over it. We'll see it on the mixtape tomorrow morning on Sports Center. Oscar Shibwe. That's going right to the top of his highlight reel. Rich, he ran 94 feet to go get that ball. That ball is supposed to go out of bounds. He's supposed to take it out down there on the baseline. Unbelievable. Six foot nine inches, 250 pounds, and a whole lot of hustle from Oscar Shibwe. And now he's feeling 13 for the big man. Jones high arc. Oh. And there's a follow slam by Kai Jones. A couple of freshman big men in the Big 12. That's his second body that he's caught today. Oh, freshman, okay. Shibwe the rebound, but he lost it to Jones. Are we getting a little can you top this right now? Hey, I, I would love to see it. I'm here Give for it. Give it back to Kai Jones. Come on. 
Shibway another rebound. Oscar Shibway is going to be a rebound shy of a double-double. We have a timeout on the floor. A 41-point lead for the Mountaineers. Folks, you want to talk about effort. This is effort. There is no way he should have got this basketball. Everybody else wanted him to let it go. Then tops it off with a nasty slam. Oscar Shibway. I, as a basketball fan, appreciate your effort. If that dunk is not on the SC Top 10, if that play <laughs> is not on the SC Top, SC top 10, I'm boycotting. <laughs> I mean, look at this for the Mountaineers. They live off of second chance points tonight. They have 24. Want to know why they lost that game in Manhattan to K-State? They only had nine second chance points against the Wildcats. Sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windshield. And what's crazy, to, to talk about how good, oh! To talk about how good this West Virginia team is. They didn't play good at all against Kansas State, but still cut the lead down to six and still had a chance to win that game. That's how good this team is. Keep in mind, they only have three losses. They lost a close game on the road to St. John's. They lost to Kansas, no shame in that. And of course, that ugly loss on Saturday against K-State. Well, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 Hoops fans. It's the exclusive home for 18th-ranked Texas Tech at TCU tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Plus, next Wednesday, those same Red Raiders hosting number 14, West Virginia. Also, Texas squaring off against TCU that same night. Both games at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. You can sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12. Febris with the free throw. He's in double digits with 10. I got to tell you, I'm not just saying this because I work for the company. That ESPN Plus app is money. If you haven't seen any of the shows like Penny Hardaway's show or even better, I'm telling you, that Peyton Manning show, Peyton's Places, is so worth it. It is nonstop entertainment. We spend so much time traveling yeah. at the airport on airplanes. It is well worth it. Well, Sheepway and Culver are checking out. Chances are we won't see them again tonight. But what an effort put forth by the Morgantown version of Twin Towers. Hey, to add to your point with the ESPN Plus app, if you buy the Disney Plus app with the ESPN Plus app, that's even better because the Disney Plus app, I absolutely love. My little girl loves all those Disney movies, and we always watch it, and we always use it all the time. Will Baker went down hard going for that rebound on the full extension. Good to see get him get up and at least try to walk it off. Well, for lack of a better term, King, garbage time is fast approaching. 6.45 to go in this game. And it's a 40-point cushion for the Mountaineers. And that's a lead that they basically held for most of the second half. Yeah, if I'm soccer smart, I think this last 6, 6.45, I think maybe you might take the starters out with two minutes to go. But I think this is kind of crucial to, to, to tell you what kind of players you have. You know, can you cut this lead down? I know you're not going to win the game, yeah. but can you cut the lead down to maybe 20 or maybe 30? Let's see what kind of heart you have right now when your back's against the wall. So I think this is crucial for this Texas Longhorns team this last six minutes. Well, what did Shaka tell us? He said the one word that comes to mind in this game is toughness. Yeah. How tough are you to come into West Virginia and take on maybe the toughest team in the nation? And right now, the score does not indicate that they've handled that at all. Yeah. But I agree with you. I think it's a test of character right now yeah. for this Texas team. And there's a good bucket by Andrew Jones, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. I mean, there are so many things that you could be impressed with about West Virginia. I'm really impressed with the balanced scoring we've seen from the Mountaineers. Not just the fact that 11 players have scored, but everybody getting buckets and sharing the basketball, too. 12 assists for West Virginia tonight. They're just that deep and that talented, which is why I, I keep reiterating the point that they are a potential Final Four team when their offense is clicking. 
when the offense is not clicking, I think they're at least a Sweet 16 team because they play 12 guys. And they got eight guys who can go for 15 points on you at any given night. And that's just not like any other team we've seen. Logan Rout now has seven. That's a new season high for him. Andrew Jones heating up a bit. Here's Osaboyan. The defensive specialist missed one from the field. And here's another unforced error. The crowd wants Sean McNeil to shoot it. 22 and White has you the ball. Go take this. He's a three-point specialist. That one too strong. Taz Sherman the rebound. Baker tries for three. He still has made just one three-pointer this season. He's one for 24 on the year. He's still getting them up despite the percentages. <laughs> and you might have heard that roar from the crowd, if only momentarily. Oh, Saboyan with a pretty up and under. Hey. That cheer from the crowd was because Spencer Mackey, number 30 in white, is about to go to the scorer's table. He's a walk-on. And I could guarantee you Spencer Mackey will get some looks at the basket. Here's McBride, too strong. And Febris with a three. Even to build momentum for the next game yeah. going forward, it's good to see Texas get some flow going offensively. They're going to be taking on the LSU Tigers on Saturday in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Well, it's been all Mountaineers, and the Mountaineer Maniacs are loving it. One of the great rivalries in all of college basketball, women or men, Tennessee and UConn. The Lady Vols currently 23rd in the country. UConn at number three. That's always a fun one coming up Thursday on ESPN. Adam Amin, Rebecca Lobo will have that call. And South Carolina still number one in the country in the women's game. A little more parity this year yeah. in women's college basketball. No true dominant team. Same could be said in the men's game. Yeah, you like to see it from women's basketball, I mean. I feel like the, the parity is really good for the women's game because, just being honest, not, not many people watch it and, and people need to watch it because these women can really play and they, and they do a lot for our game. So shout out to those teams, shout out to the great women who play basketball, you do a lot for our game. We're here watching the Texas and West Virginia men's teams, both their women's teams very good as well this year. Well, Logan Rout scored the last bucket for West Virginia. He's got a new career high. That's nine for him. But the big news is Spencer Mackey's on the floor, number 30 in white. He's the last man off the bench for Bob Huggins. He's played a total of nine minutes this season. Has yet to knock down a bucket. He does have two points on two free throws. But this Mountaineer faithful crowd wants Spencer Mackey to get a bucket. Let's see if he can do it in the final two minutes. Here he is with the ball. I think it might be a little hard for him to get a bucket with, with Courtney Ramey and the West Virginia starters on the course there. McNeil tries for three. Spencer Mackey averaged a touch under 35 points a game as a senior in high school. He was a straight bucket getter. He really was. 5'11", 170 pound freshman guard out of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Went to Silver Grove High School, did Spencer Mackey. He's on the right side right now, posted up on the baseline. Go. 
Who was that guy for you on Baylor? Jackson Moffitt. And Jackson actually similar average, like 30 plus in high school to his senior year. So Jack, I feel like a lot of walk-ons, like they, they just were bucket getters in high school. And then they, they, they actually can play. Like I feel like they're actually good. Brother, let me tell you, I would kill to put on a West Virginia or a Texas or any uniform. Uh -huh. I mean, you've got to be, that that's an eye-opener for fans right now if you're watching. Like, Spencer Mackey was by far the best player on his high school yeah. team. I mean, it just speaks to how good college basketball players are, especially Division One basketball players. Like, like they're really good. Uh, Get it on. On. There he is with the ball. Oh, you got to let it go. Oh, oh man. and it's blocked. Look, look, look for him again. Look. Give it to him. Uh oh. He got it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Listen to this crowd. <laughs> well, that was the highest of the night, or at least the cherry on the Sunday in a blowout win for West Virginia. They hang 97 on the Texas Longhorns and win it by 38. Spencer Mackey gets his first field goal of the season. And West Virginia improves to 15-3 and three on the year and 4-2 and two in Big 12 play. And now for tonight's player of the game brought to you by Phillips 66. You could have given it to any number of West Virginia Mountaineers players, but Oscar Shibwe is our player of the game. 13 points and 10 rebounds. That's his seventh double-double on the season. Just a freshman, and things are looking up for the Mountaineers. Final thoughts, King. If West Virginia's offense...